Well, you know, I'll, I'll begin by saying, you know, what we thought would be an exciting evening uh, turned out to be a disappointing evening. Um, you know, I told my team I, I, I was, you know, certainly uh, excited, you know, coming into the game about their preparation and the way that they um, thought about this game, uh, what they needed to do um, physically, mentally, uh, all the things that we talk about. I, I was excited about their preparation. They were ready to play. Um, you know, I, I take ownership in not getting our guys in the right position tonight. And we just did not um, make the best of the opportunities that we had. And then certainly um, a lot of things didn't go the right way tonight with um, not being able to get off the field on third down, um, turning the ball over on offense. And it just seemed there were at times some some key things in the game that um, didn't go our way. And so one of those nights where you look at it and, and it's totality um, and look, take nothing away from Alabama. They played very well tonight as well. Um, but we're dealing with a second loss now in, in the uh, in the SEC. And you know, we're, we're, we're on the uphill, um, certainly. But we've got to, as coaches, we've got to put our guys in a better position to succeed. Uh, that's the challenge that I, that I have. Um, I own that. And, uh, you know, we've got to, we've got to play um, cleaner football and we've got to get off the field, certainly. Um, those are the two big takeaways for, for, for me in terms of the game itself. Uh, and then certainly, um, you know, some of the, the, you know, untimely things that happened during the game um, that, that were critical um, that, that really, you know, put us back relative to, uh, you know, the game itself, whether they were untimely penalties or, um, you know, third down conversions. Um, they all impacted the game and the, the eventual outcome. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. Like you spent a lot of the second half talking to Blake, you know, just talking to him on the sideline, trying to figure some things out, I guess. Is that what you were doing? Were you able to come up with any answers? Yeah, again, look, if you're watching the game, you're like, w what did these guys do for two weeks? Like, we, we have a, a scheme to stop the quarterback. We did not get that done. So um, I take responsibility for it. Um, you know, Blake is not going to hide from the responsibility, but but we also have to put our, posi our players in the right position too, to take advantage of what they're capable of doing. Um, so we we own it together, and we've got to get it fixed, certainly, um, because it's it's uh, it's been a couple of weeks now, you know, in two games. So um, I. I I respect the, the, the inquiries and the questions um, because we, we now go into these last three games with the need to win all three of these games and, and, and play better football uh, in the month of November. Uh, Co Coach, when you're sort of talking about putting, trying to find the right way to put the guys in, put the, guys in the right spot um, to make plays, are you talking about just trying to find the right schematic fit for these guys, the right no, this, uh, answers. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit about you know we're not reinventing the wheel when it comes to defending the quarterback. There's only a couple of ways to defend them, you know, and and so we we have to be able to um, get our players that we're not trading any of them. There's no waiver wire. We're not you know um, bringing anybody up from you know the the demo squad, we've, we've got to come up with the right answers on what works best for the guys that we have. And it hasn't worked very well these last couple of games. So we've got to go back and, and, and start all over again and look at what's the best way to defend um, in certain situations with the players that, that we currently have. Because they want to do it. They were ready. They were locked in. They were focused. Um, they, they 
they had the right mindset coming into this game. Coach, how do you approach the last three weeks of the season knowing that the college football playoff is likely out of the question? Yeah, I think everybody asks the same question. We, we really, look, they're disappointed. We're, we're disappointed in the way we performed. You know, we're, we're not going, these guys are not like, hey, we're out of the playoffs. That, that's not what they're, they're disappointed, and I'm disappointed, that we didn't live up to the standards of LSU football. That affects us more than the damn playoffs. We're, we're, we're disappointed. When you put on the jersey for LSU, there's a standard of football that, that those three letters on your jersey, it's a prerequisite. And, and we didn't live up to that. That's the disappointment. Brian, you mentioned got to get it fixed. Uh, in the coming days, weeks, months, how do you address the deficiencies that, that you see in this program? How do you go about fixing it? Well, deficiencies are a relative term, right? I mean, we, we just beat, you know, we beat Ole Miss here in a great game that beat Georgia, right? I mean, we went on the road and, and, and beat, you know, a really good South Carolina team, you know, that, that um, had a great victory. Um, you know, against A and M. So, playing in the SEC is is a dogfight. We did not play up to our standards tonight. So, you know, fixing is a relative term, right? We we have to do some some hard thinking relative to how do we put our kids in a better position to succeed, and then, quite frankly, you know, take care of the football. We've got six turnovers in the last two games. If I told you you're going to turn over the ball six times against AM and Alabama. How do you feel about that? I'd say not very good. As well as, you know, we got to get off the field, um, you know, and stop the running quarterback. So th those, when you break it down, are really the big things that we'll be looking at. In the back. After the USC game, you had referenced sort of a feeling on the sideline with the players that maybe they felt like the game had been won before it was over. Was there a point tonight where you felt the opposite might have been true, that they felt like they were out of it before the game was over? No. 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 I mean, those guys kept fighting, kept playing. You saw we scored with, what, 11 seconds to go? Um, I think that's probably a pretty good indication. They blitzed seven against us with 22 seconds to go. Um, they didn't quit. We didn't quit. We kept playing. We didn't look at the scoreboard. They didn't obviously look at the scoreboard. They didn't want us to score. Nussmeyer got knocked down and got a personal foul penalty with about a minute to go in the game. That was two teams still playing right to the very end. Good. Offhand, from, uh, just from your view, particularly early in the game, what was the biggest problem on third down? I mean, I'd have to go back and look at, um, you know, third down is, is about, first of all, staying out of third down and long. You know, as you know, the national percentages of, of success on third down are about 40%. So stay out of third and long, I mean, generally speaking. I mean, some, some of it is about, you know, decision making, some of it about blitz protection, some of it is a little bit all of that. Um, we've been really good in third down situations traditionally during the year. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, again, the, the, the turnover um, really put us back. Um, you know, the, the face mask penalty was a momentum killer for us uh, in the game. So, you know, I, I could like sit here and kind of, you know, the bottom line is we didn't play to the standard of LSU football. That's on me. I've got, I've got to make sure that we put our players in better positions to succeed, and that's the work I'll do. Third down is, and I'm not poo-pooing the question, but third down is something that I think we can work through and, and, and continue to get better at. Uh, right over here. Just the, yeah. with, with the red zone offense, it's been a couple of weeks now. It's just been tough to kind of convert touchdowns. Just what are you seeing in that area, and just how do you go about, I guess, trying to get it on the right course of the last three weeks? Uh, you know, red zone is about, at the end of the day, um, having a, a great running game where you just chew people up in the running game 
or you've got a veteran quarterback um, that is smart, savvy, experienced, uh, and picks. And I've had both. Um, Garrett's getting there. Um, he's he's a first year starter. Um, he's learning the ropes. Um, we've been just okay running the ball, and and that's why we have our uh, fits and starts in in the uh, in the short field areas. Can you just talk a little bit more about the turnovers and how they're kind of self-destructing, you know, when you've got things going, the inter interception in the end zone and some of those things? Well, you know, the, the, the first turnover was, was mechanical in the sense that, you know, we had the ball in one hand. Quarterbacks, when they get flushed out of the, the pocket, and Garrett will tell you this, he should have had a second hand on the football. However, we had a young guy in there who missed the protection. He got flushed. And hence, we can sit here again and talk about all those particulars. The bottom line is we turn the football over. We got to go back and we got to work on that. And, and we got to get two hands on the football. Those are fundamentals. That's on me. That's on coaching. We got to coach better and make sure that that gets done. The second one was um, bracket coverage. Um, and unfortunately, I have seen that interception way too many times in my career. Um, it is a free linebacker that can just drop and um, you have to play with touch and throw to the back line and, and we just didn't do it there. Um, so I feel like I'm standing here trying to make excuses and I don't want to do that. Um, we just got to coach better in those situations. <laughs> You keep mentioning playing up to the LSU standard. Yeah. Can you put your finger on why that just didn't happen tonight? Well, I mean, I, I think I, I kind of talked about a little bit of it, right? Um, the inability to get off the field on third down was, you know, tactical in some in instances, not being leveraged on the football the right way. I mean, so, I mean, I, again, it wasn't for lack of effort. It wasn't for a lack of want to. We have to continue to work with the guys that we have out there. We got a lot of young players out there. Um, and whether it's freshman running backs or a freshman playing the nickel position or a first year starter here or there, we just can't make excuses and we just got to keep working with them and keep coaching them. They were ready to play. But We've got some inexperience that we have to keep working with, and we've got to put them in better position to succeed, and that's on me. We've got time for two more, Corey and then Bryce. Brian, over here. Yeah. Uh, two quick ones, if I may. Uh, it seems like you guys have been playing really clean football the last few weeks. Um, do you have an explanation of kind of why the penalties cropped up in tonight's game? And then so we had two holding penalties, right? Um, you know, I mean, I think we, we, we all would agree that holding penalties almost become what did I see or what I did not see that, that play. Um, you know, the face mask penalty, um, was it a face mask? I, I don't know. Uh, okay. So you were there. You saw it. Um, you were on the field. Did you get the instant re replay? Replay. Ripped his head off. No. It was a by rule, it was a face mask. By rule, he grabbed his face mask and jerked he his helmet did, inside he out. He didn't jerk it, but he did grab it. He grabbed it. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> glad we got that confirmation. Um, and then. I'm sure he'll be fine back on solid things. Yeah. Um, anyway, look, I think the only one that I was a little upset with was maybe the late push with Swinson. But, you know, it, it's like anything else, right? You know, the other guy was giving him the business, and um, he was the last one to get caught. Other than that, you know, we didn't have a lot of the pre-snap penalties. Um, we didn't have a lot of PIs or holdings. It didn't seem sloppy to me. Um, we might have had a frustration penalty late in the game. I mean, that, that's kind of how I saw it, and maybe I'm wrong, uh, but... I don't, I don't leave this game going, man, we got to clean up these penalties. I leave this game going, we got to put our kids in a better position to succeed. That's on me, our coaches. We've got to coach them better and put them because 
that's who we got. And there's some inexperienced players out there that are going to continue to play for us. And we've got to put them in a position to succeed. And, and then real quick, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, there was some debris thrown on the field tonight. Just, you know, what, what would you say? To, to I, you know, I look, if I was in the stands, I wouldn't be happy. I'm not advocating that you throw anything on the field. Um, but I think it's like any other venue. I think you should use good judgment. But um, I, I wouldn't be happy if I was watching us play either. I was not – I wasn't pleased with the way I coached or, or played either. Right here, Coach. We've seen that time your teams be able to kind of pull back on that rope when things start to snowball, the South Carolina game being an example. How fine is that line? Really being able to well, you pull saw back? it. I mean, we were we're we're back in the ball game if we if we score on the one yard line or the three yard line. I mean, that's 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 the margin, right? You know, we drive it all the way down to the goal line. We're poised to make this a one score game, and um, you got a ball game. We just we can't overcome the myriad of things that didn't go the right way tonight. And that's just the reality of it, right? And a lot of that falls on my shoulders, that I've got to do a better job. And, and then our players have got to learn from, you know, these situations that, that we can't put ourselves in them or we can't overcome it. And unfortunately, they were, they were untimely. And that was a really good football team. And if you keep doing that, and I've said this to our team, you know, you're, you're living on borrowed time when you keep putting yourself in those tough positions. And tonight, the dam broke. When we kept putting ourselves in those tough positions, the, the dam finally, finally broke.